Okay, so, um, yeah, wouldn't you know it, the one day I actually try to use a microphone, it's raining really hard, so um, hopefully this will not break my microphone. First time really using this on this kind of a thing. I'm very, very new to social media and all this other stuff, and this is very technical for me. But I'm gonna do my favorite obliques exercise. The obliques, uh, they're the lateral core musculature. They rotate, they resist rotation, they laterally flex or bend you, and they resist being laterally flexed or bent, okay? So um, this is a single arm suitcase deadlift. And um, I'm gonna do my best to explain to you how I, how I like to do it. Once again, this is not a tutorial um, or instructional. This is just me explaining how I do this. I'm sure there's other ways of doing it as well. But um, And then, uh, oh yeah, along those lines, I can't really say I recommend this. There are some inherent risks to doing this. So um, this is just for your information, and I hope it's somehow helpful. Okay, so I have a 50-pound barbell. Um, the real important part is centering my grip, making sure that the, uh, the bar does not tilt to the front or to the back, okay? Um, that is super important, especially as the bar gets heavier. I like to have a narrow, neutral stance. The space between my feet should look like a corridor. I place my hand on my head. That allows me to really open up the right lateral core compartment and expose it to the weight that is trying to deviate me in this direction but i'm going to get the two x's extended spine and expanded rib cage i want to start from the tallest posture possible most of my weight is on my left leg i will be standing on both of them but most of my intention is on the left side of my body once again, I'm not sagging. I've taken all the slack out of my system. Take a deep breath in through my nose. Take a second breath on the way down. Blow it all out. One more time. Just a few reps, like two. All right, let's go two on the other side. Once again, when I lift the bar up, if the bar, if that happens, whatever direction, the low, I call it the low side. So if this is the low side of the bar, when I pick it up, I'm gonna move my hand in the direction of whichever of the side is lower. That should correct the balance on the bar. Placing my hand on the back of my head, opening up that left side compartment, exposing it to the weight in my right hand, tall spine, expanded chest, big inhalation through the nose. Second. One more time. And I'm pushing mostly through my right leg. Okay, once again, I'm standing on both of them but whatever side the bar is on, that's the side you want to emphasize, or that's the leg you want to emphasize. Okay, so 50 pounds, I'm adding 10 pounds to the bar. I like to thank Bells of Steel for providing these really narrow collars. I have a short five pound bar, so I run out of space really quickly on this. The old collars I were using were taking up too much space at the end and not allowing me to load the bar the way I want to. I will be giving shout outs to the products and the companies that have been kind enough to help provide me with equipment or sponsor my videos. So I hope you don't mind. Okay, once again, when I pick the bar up, I want to make sure that it is very neutral. It's slightly that way, so I'm going to move my hand slightly in this direction. Here we go. Two reps. Start with a very tall posture, sucking my gut in. That engages the core even better. 
All my weight is on my left leg. At the top, I always try to reestablish the tallest posture possible. All right. Other side. All my weight is on my left leg now. Very tall. I'm actually putting my mind into the upper chest on this. I try to ignore what's in my hand. I try to lower my upper chest. And then I'm going to use this leg to drive my upper chest up. If I do that, it indexes my core the way I want to, and I don't sag down to the bar. One more time. Bringing it from this side. Okay. So what I like to do is I add small amounts of weight, but I just do a few reps per each uh, incremental change. I know this wire is a little cumbersome on me, but I have to keep this, uh, whatever you call it, receiver or whatever it is in my pocket to protect it from the rain. Once again, I'm not a real technical guy. I don't usually use stuff like this. So if you have better suggestions on weatherproof mics and things like that, I'd really appreciate it. Okay. Who knows? These might be weatherproof already. We'll find out the hard way if not. Okay, here we go. Lifting that up, making sure that's still a little bit front heavy. So I move my hand a little in that direction. Getting as tall and sucked in on the midsection as I can. That activates my core. Pushing hard through the left leg. One more time. When I put the weight down, I try to be as conscious of how I do that as when I'm actually doing the working set. Oftentimes we hurt ourselves when we put weights down or pick them up because we forget to uh, have the same mindfulness that we do during the actual exercise. Okay, once again, two X's, extended and expanded. Takes out the slack in the spine and the core. Allows me to Utilize those structures to the max. It also lengthens the lever the most, which puts the most disadvantage into the structures. And that is actually an advantage when you're trying to train them to position your body so that the weight is coming in to your system as heavy as possible. All right. I'm trying to move through this quickly. Adding another 10 pounds, but got these 25 pound plates. The mic system I'm using, I purchased at full retail, so I'm not, this is not a plug for Rode, but in case you're curious, it's the Rode Wireless Pro, I think. I'm, I'm new to it myself, so I can't really speak for how good it is. We'll all find out soon. All right. Okay, so from here, I'm gonna just start from from the dead, dead stop on the floor. Here we go. T 
tall at the top. One more breath. You might have seen a little shaking on this side. This is my left on uh, my left knee. I have some uh, long-standing damage to it that I hope I'll be fixing soon. But anyway, here we go. Right side. Take that big breath in through my nose. Pressurize it in my midsection. Got a big pneumatic bubble that I'm going to push against. Get tall at the top before I bring it back down. Okay. Now instead of a 10 pound weight increase, we're going to go with a 20 pound weight increase. Um, this will bring the bar up to 100 pounds. The bar I'm using is a five foot bar. It is not an Olympic bar. It's five feet long, it weighs 30 pounds. So, in case you're wondering, for my little yard workouts, it's about all the bar I can accommodate in the space that I have on my humble little walkway. All right, here we go. So if when I pick this bar up, it starts to tilt, I'm not going to continue. I'm going to put it back down. I'm going to fix my grip and try again. I try to get my butt as low as I can because I want to be able to drive with my legs. Here we go. Tall chest at the top. One more breath to take it back down. I also emphasize try not to let any part of the bar nor my arm touch my body. I need to be able to keep everything outside. I want it out here so it's really pulling on whatever side that I'm, whatever the unloaded side lateral compartment is. God, I hope this microphone's working. I'll be so disappointed if it's not. And this whole video is quiet. Anyway, worry about that later. Here we go. Get tall at the top and then All right, once again, that bar was trying to bend me this way. So I'm using these and a bunch of other things to not let it bend me. My personal belief on, especially the obliques and the lateral core, is that their higher purpose is to not let the spine bend. So, That's why I like this exercise so much. I used to have significant back pain that no matter how much core work I did and all the stuff that I was told to do, it wasn't until I started strengthening. If you look at your midsection as a box, we're always told to do crunches, leg raises, sit-ups, and we're also told to do back extensions, but not a lot of attention is given to this. So if this is a box, it's like having a box with a strong front and back and the sides of the box are wet and soggy. That doesn't work out too well. At least it didn't for me. So when I started getting these strong, my back is so much better now than it was when I was half my age. All right, I gotta do something about this cord. Anyway. Now, once we're around here, my left knee is probably gonna start bitching at me a little bit. That's why I gotta go real slow. If I go slow, the muscles can protect the knee, or at least they should. Here we go. Tall.
All right. Oop. Okay, that was front heavy, so I moved my hand. It tipped this direction. I moved my hand in this direction a little bit. Okay, it stopped raining. Maybe I can clip this back here. Let's try. I'm sorry I'm so fumbly with all this. To me, this is, this is really high tech by the time this is coming out. So let's see uh, if that works out. Okay. Quick weight change. But no, going back to... Uh, um, oh, sorry. Here's a topic I wanted to cover. Oftentimes in comments, people ask if training the obliques will give you a blocking midsection. And my, in my own experience, I'd have to say, if you're training them the way I like to train them, then I'd have to say yes. But then you'd have to ask yourself if, um, if you have back pain like I did, or you are an athlete and your higher function is to perform well in what you do, you would have to then prioritize which is more important, having a blocky midsection that is strong, stable, and functional, or having a thinner, more sexy weight um, midsection that might not be uh, as functional or uh, in my case as pain free so it's just a matter of priorities but I also practice stomach vacuums a lot that's basically what you see bodybuilders do this sucking the gut in but not just sucking it in this way also trying to lengthen and pull the sides in as well i think if you practice doing that even as you strengthen your obliques um let's see that was 120 we're gonna go one even as you strengthen your obliques and they get thicker you can still, if you train the muscles to pull inwards towards the spine, like a corset, I think that's what it's called, um, then maybe it uh, shouldn't be. So, see, I think the last one I had was 120, so now I've got 130. So it's this, it's extending or ex extending the spine, expanding the rib cage, and then sucking everything in. So if you train that a bunch, I think that can counter a lot of the, the negative effects that might, uh, or if you consider it negative, the thickening of your midsection. Okay, so this is 130 pounds. Um, let's just go one rep. That was a little front heavy. I'm going to adjust my grip. Still a little front heavy. Tall and... Okay, my knee is not liking that too much. Um, my left knee. So, 
we'll see where we go from here. All right. Right side. Once again, I, again, I'm trying to get my hips low. I'm trying to wedge my hips under my chest. I'm focusing on lifting this, not the bar. If I use my leg drive to lift my chest, hopefully the bar comes with it. And that index is my core to stabilize what I'm doing. Tall at the top. Okay. I'm gonna go one more time here. You know, I should say I'm not quite sure if this is just the case with me or maybe one of you physios out there can tell me better. But this, an exercise like this it probably puts a good amount of stress on the lateral meniscus. So if you have any kind of issues there, once again, I never recommend that people do any of the things I do in my video. So if you decide on your own to try something like this, um, just be aware it could, uh, could put some stress on certain structures that it might not otherwise uh, in people with healthier tissues. I don't know what I'm saying. Okay. So this bar weighs about 140 pounds. Wedging my butt low. I'm gonna focus on lifting my chest. Uh, let's see how the left knee likes this. Front heavy. Move my grip forward once again. Still front heavy. One more time. to compensate a little bit on that one. Okay. That's probably it for the left side. And maybe for the day. Let's go right side. One more time. And get tall in the chest here. Okay. Okay, we're gonna try to keep this short. I hope I've given you most of the explanation that I can on how I do this. Once again, I can't say I recommend this type of a thing because um, I don't know your history or anything like that, but this is just for your information, something I do. And um, I hope in some way these videos are helpful to you. Anyway, thanks for watching. Much aloha.